That's the one thing about our audience. They always want a new guy to break through the glass ceiling. And all you have to do is just be real. Allow me to reintroduce myself. I am the jabroni beating, pie eating, trailblazing, eyebrow raising, talking is done, you're out of your class, no sleep till Brooklyn, the rock whoops your ass. Woo! I wish you and King would quit talking. Welcome to Around the Ring episode 54 for today, Monday, February 1st, 2016. I'm your host, Dave Brown. Uh, don't forget to check us out online on the Twitters and all that good stuff. You can uh, follow us on Twitter at Around the Ring OK. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Around the Ring OK. Uh, our website, Around the Ring OK WordPress.com. And you can get this show on a plethora of places you can uh, subscribe to us in itunes you can listen on stitcher radio tune in radio on the k98 talk spreaker channel uh, all over the place so we appreciate everyone uh, checking us out and uh, this week basically is covered by two big returns uh, one is the return of Lucha Underground, uh, episode one of season two premiered last week. And also last week we had the return of The Rock to Monday Night Raw. So uh, lots of cool stuff to get into. We're first going to talk about Lucha Underground. So Lucha Underground season two. Um, this was so much fun. Uh, I... I loved season one of Lucha Underground. I thought it was a phenomenal show. It's unlike anything else out there in professional wrestling. It is, or on TV, period. Now, you know, to be fair, it's not a wrestling promotion. It is a show about professional wrestling. But it has some of the best wrestling out there. The production is phenomenal. It is just really, really good. Um, This... uh, this week's episode opened up with, or this first, the season episode opened up with some highlights from the previous season, and then we had Vampiro in a nut house. Um, they're basically trying to decide whether or not he's okay to be let out, and he keeps having all of these violent thoughts that you keep seeing, uh, and they decide, okay, you're good to go, and he's picked up by Matt Stryker. And which he asks if we're going back to the temple. And Matt said there are invitations, but the invitations were that things are going to be much darker. Uh, we then cut to a shot of Katrina in Dario Cueto's old office. Phoenix comes in, uh, says he wants Mio Moretes and uh, the Lucha Underground title. Phoenix is, of course, holding the Gift of the Gods championship. Uh, Katrina tells him that uh, he must defend the Gift of the Gods title tonight against King Cuerno, who has been looking for him and whatnot after the uh, Gift of the Gods match at Ultima Lucha. Uh, We then get a shot of Matt Stryker and Vampiro on commentary. Uh, Mio Moretes is sitting in a throne looking over everything. Uh, It was kind of cool that it is, it's... The set seems a little bit different. They don't have the house band uh, anymore, but I, I like the fact things have changed. And what we come to find out later is that Meal is the one who's actually running the show. Well, and let's be honest, Katrina is. Um, so things are quite a bit different. Uh, the opening contest is King Cuerno versus Phoenix for the Gift of the Gods Championship. And uh, this is a fun match flying all over the place. Uh, Phoenix hit a couple of uh, good lethal injections, one that he turned into a dragon sleeper, which is a cool spot. Um, Cuerno won with this crazy-looking version of a tombstone pile driver. Um, it was brutal-looking. Uh, really good match, great way to start the show. Uh, we then get backstage or outside, and Helico, Ivelisse, and Son of Havoc arriving at the temple. Um and then you have Katrina coming out and talking to Maria Santos. And the, well, okay, so before I get there, so the former trios champions arrive at the temple and they get approached by Katrina. 
uh, and they say, hey, we want a shot at the trio's title, and she said, well, you're going to fight each other tonight, and they say, look, we, we've we got, we're finally on the same page, we're not fighting each other, and Katrina says, well, the winner gets a shot at the Lucha Underground title, to which Ivelisse looks at the two, Son of Havoc and Angelico, and says, okay, fine, we, we're doing it. And then she adds, but when I win, I'm coming straight after you. So freaking awesome. Um, so, yeah, then we get Katrina comes out, uh, grabs M- Maria Santos, the um, announcer, the ring announcer, I should say, and whispers in her ear. And then it it's announced the Son of Havoc, and Helico and Ivelisse. And we'll have a three-way match, the winner getting a title shot. Um now, before the match starts, they go to commercial break, and there's a backstage moment with Katrina and King Cuerno, where um, Katrina says, remember our deal, and, and King Cuerno says, you don't have anything to worry about. So it sounds like they are uh, setting it up so he is in league with them, and he's promised not to challenge uh, Mil Moritas, is my guess. Uh, we then go back to the match, and this is a really fun match. Uh, Ivelisse gets the win um, with them kind of out of nowhere. Great match. And so, and, and this is a good place to segue into a story. Um, there was a lot of talk whether or not uh, Lucha Underground Season 2 would happen. And uh, Apparently, during the off-season, WWE tried to, to sign up a lot of the Lucha Underground talent. Uh, there was a story that they had offered contracts to Angelico and Jack Evans to bring them in as a tag team, and they turned them down. Uh, Angelico is just amazing. One hell of a talent. Great-looking dude. And uh, I, I could totally see why WWE is interested in him. But I'm also looking at this. I look. I look at Son of Havoc, i.e. Matt Cross. This guy is amazing. He is. He was in tough enough. Why he was never picked up by WWE, I'll never know. Unless he just happened to fall in those, those years of the pr- post OVW, 2002 pre NXT as a developmental brand years where a lot of stars just weren't made. And there was actually a pretty interesting uh, column someone had written about that, calling that the lost generation. Um, and it, I can't remember where I saw it, but it was it was pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I watched this. I'm like, wow, why why aren't these people in NXT? Why aren't these people in you know in WWE? But if they were, then we wouldn't have the awesomeness that is Lucha Underground. And and Matt Cross definitely seems to be doing find for himself on on the indies so uh, but also I do wonder I'm like well I you know in Helico he does stuff in triple a and I think he does some in New Japan but I know he's a he's a, he's big in triple a but I, I really wonder why why hasn't he got picked up by some of these the bigger indies and if he's not New Japan why uh, why isn't he in Ring of Honor or something like that and I know he does a lot of work in PWG um, but yeah, it just scratch your head and makes you wonder why. Um, so then uh, going to break, you see these it's a shot of these three guys looking for the temple, and they're approached by Black Lotus, and she's like, oh, well, follow me. Uh, we then get Ivelisse versus Mio Moretes for the Lucha Underground Championship. Uh, the Disciples of Death come out and take out uh, Havoc, and uh, and Helico, uh, so it just leaves Mortez and uh, Ivelisse. Um This was your kind of classic, you know, David Goliath match. Moritz did eventually get the win with the flatliner, and he attacked Ivelisse after the match. And um, during which Prince Puma came out and made the save. And this is the after Prince Puma makes the save, a Pentagon Junior comes out, attacks. Uh, Mio Moritas and does the whole arm break thing, so that's uh, pretty cool. Um, and then we go to one last segment with Black Lotus uh, with the uh, those three dudes. They approach a 
building of some kind, Dario Cueto is standing outside. And uh, they're like, well, we're here to see a fight. Blah, 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 blah. Dario's like, well, 20 bucks. They each give him 20 bucks. He lets him into this building. One of them says, well, who's fighting? And he says, you are. Closes, locks the door. Then you hear roaring and screaming. And Dario's brother, uh, whose name I've completely forgotten again. Excuse me, sorry. Um, basically kills those three dudes. And that's it. Um, one piece of news, apparently Lucha Underground has been greenlit for season three, so yay. They're actually in the process of filming the season finale of Ultima Lucha right now. So they are really, you know, up on things. And um, I'm glad we're going to get a season three, so that's fantastic. Uh, I guess they're going to be 20 or 30 some odd episodes this season instead of the 40 some odd that we had in season one, but, but still, uh, also the show is going to iTunes, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then there's Jim Cornette. So Jim Cornette went on a just awesomely uh, bad worth filled rant recently about how much he hates Lucha Underground, how much it sucks, how it's a movie, blah, 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 blah. And it's funny and sad all at the same time. And I, I'm, I kind of like Cornette. I know he says some crazy shit, but I think he tells really good stories. He's a great storyteller. But this is a case, I think, of Jim's just an older guy and this is something newer that he just doesn't get. And that happens, man. I'm an older guy. You know, I'm 41. So there's definitely stuff out there that I don't get. Uh, thank God I get Lucha Underground because it is amazing. And unfortunately he doesn't. So that's okay. He may, it's just not for him. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, that was a return of Lucha Underground. Thankfully, uh, it's back. Yay. And then we have Monday Night Raw from last week, which was from Miami, Florida, or Florida, as we're going to talk about here in a little bit. Uh, obviously, it started out with a bunch of highlights of Roman Reigns and the Royal Rumble with very edited crowd responses for, for the Roman Meister. Uh, Vince and Stephanie come out for a uh, pretty bad in-ring promo, but we get the line of the century probably, which is uh, played, which was played at the beginning of the show, which Vince McMahon just saying, we don't care how you feel. Obviously, Vince, we know. And that just speaks volumes about how I think this company treats their audience. They just, they don't care how, how a company can be so cavalier about their customers is beyond me, but stupid asses like me keep watching it. Though, to be fair, I'm not helping their ratings. That's a whole other story. What's next? Um, so triple H did come out to a pretty decent little pop. Uh, trips was really talking up Roman Reigns, trying to make him look super strong and that they they said that they would announce at the end of the night who would be the main of in the main event at fast lane the winner of said match would then face triple h at wrestlemania uh we then had one of two highlights of the night uh we had dolph ziggler versus kevin owens in just a fucking great match uh another good thing kevin owens walks out still selling from his street fight from the night before at the Royal Rumble. Uh, just This was fantastic. Uh, you were, seriously, go back, find this match. I didn't write any blow-by-blow blow stuff down. Uh, there were some good fight Owens, fight chance at a few points. Uh, it was just a great fucking match. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and actually, I'm sorry, there were three highlights to this show. This was one of them. Um, Roman Reigns is backstage with Jojo. That wasn't a highlight. It wasn't bad, but... And we have highlight number two. <laughs> the Social Outcasts come out for an in-ring promo. And, you know, 
it's so funny. I've I've hated Heath Slater from about the second I saw him, and I really like the Social Outcasts. I mean, I'm sure some of it is because I love Bo Dallas, but this whole segment, um, Heath starts you know taunting Flo Rida, who's out in the uh, audience at the front row. Um, who I guess his song is going to be a song, one of the themes for WrestleMania. Uh, Adam Rose, I thought was weird. He called Heath Red Dragon, um, probably because he has red hair. So then uh, Bo Dallas calls out Flo. Um, Flo Heath challenges Flo Rider to a rap battle against Bo. Um, and they call him Bo Rida. And he gets a white scally cap, sunglasses, and a chain around his neck. <laughs> and he proceeds to rap in his so in his very Bo Dallasy way, and it's great. This is one of the stupidest fucking things I've ever seen, but it was so good. And then Flo Rider responds, and he is awful. I'm like, this this dude gets paid to rap to make songs and he is uh being you know made to look like a complete jabron by one of the whitest people on the face of the earth yeah it was freaking great i loved this um and during flow writer's rap he basically calls out the dudley boys uh the dudley boys come out and it's the dudley boys against curtis axel and bo dallas uh, Bo is now wearing this weird singlet looking thing, which I don't understand. Um, and the Dudleys get the win. It was kind of a fun match. Um, it, so what was interesting in, during this match on commentary, the, the commentary team mentioned that the Dudleys would have their 20th anniversary in April as a team. And it makes me wonder if at WrestleMania they will end up winning the tag titles as part of their 20th anniversary. It would be fitting. Um, I'm guessing that the tag titles will be put up in a multi-team match. Um, and it, I mean, you could have you could have it be uh, the Usos versus the Dudleys versus the Ascension versus the New Day, and have you know the Dudleys pin the Ascension or something. And the New Day doesn't actually lose their titles. And you could have an, a renewed Dudley's New Day feud. And if the rumors are true about Bubba Ray going all Bully Ray on us, uh, there could something could happen which causes a schism between the Dudley's. Uh, New Day wins titles back. Dudley split up. Who knows? Fantasy booking here. But uh, something to think about. AJ Styles was having a backstage interview with Renee Young when he was interrupted by Chris Jericho. And speaking of old guys, it seemed like they just have no clue. Poor Chris Jericho. We then get Chris Jericho versus AJ Styles uh, in and just a pretty darn good match. There were some nice AJ Styles chants. And here's what was interesting. Miami, you could tell, unlike the Orlando crowd the night before, the Miami crowd was about half smart, half casual fans because there were dueling AJ Styles, Y2J chants and the Y2J chants you could tell were mostly little kids. Uh, and the, and the Y2 or the AJ Styles chants were more of the adults. So you could tell it was the smart fans were chanting for AJ Styles. The casual fans and the kids were chanting for Chris Jericho. Um, AJ got the win. It was a really good match. They did a handshake at the end, even though Chris Jericho did it reluctantly. He's, I think, teasing a heel turn soon. Um, and I, I, I did enjoy that. I liked seeing AJ get a win on Raw. On SmackDown, he got a win over Curtis Axel, where he finally hit the Styles Clash, which I haven't watched yet. I'm probably going to go back and watch that. Because if nothing else, I want to hear Mauro Ronaldo's commentary. Because uh, it's supposed to be much better than the uh, the other jerk-offs we've got doing commentary right now. Except Byron Saxton. I actually like Byron Saxton. What was next? Ah, Sasha Banks versus Becky Lynch. Um, 
This match went for a couple of minutes before Charlotte hit the ring. And um, so the match was going on. At one point, um, Sasha had Becky in a bank statement. And it was a pretty good match for what it was. Charlotte then hit the ring. um, And she threw Sasha out of the ring. She attacked Becky. Sasha got back in the ring. Charlotte took her out. So this is progressing this feud. I th- hopefully it will be leaning toward a triple threat match at either Mania or at um, Fast Lane for the Divas title. Uh, there's a part I really do want Becky Lynch to win the belt at some point, but here's here's what I think they should do: um, triple threat match at Fast Lane, in which. Uh, my brain stops working in which Charlotte retains thanks to shenanigans from Ric Flair, uh, leads to a, a, um, Sasha Banks, Charlotte match at WrestleMania. Charlotte wins or Becky, um, Becky, Jesus Christ. I can't talk. Sasha wins, gets the belt, shows up on raw the next day and says, you know what? I am no diva. I am a wrestler, trashes that belt, and brings out a new belt. And holds that high. I think the place would go ballistic. And then she is immediately challenged by Becky Lynch, which sends them into a, you know, a feud. I think that would be awesome. Uh, we then had Gold Dust backstage looking for our truth. Um, Goldust is stuttering again. This is something he used to do with Booker T, apparently. And um, he finds Truth, asks Truth to be his partner. Our Truth thinks he's hitting on him. This is pretty funny. Our Truth is great at comedy. And uh, yeah, this wasn't bad. Right. We then have Bray Wyatt versus Kane. And this is the point where the crowd is paying more attention to the guy dressed like Randy Savage in the front row. Than the match, we had Randy Savage chants. Um, it was pretty hilarious, and you know it's understandable because this match was boring as fuck. It really was, and I love Bray Wyatt, and this match was just awful. Uh, we then had Rich Brennan backstage approaching this big ass limo that had approached that had come in, you know, teasing the the big star who's returning. Miz gets out to. Just a shower of booze. Um, and then a black truck pulls up and the rock gets out. Uh, and he is just all rock like. He says that Miz looks like a flying nun. Um, then he starts, you know, walking around. And they do this as one continuous shot. They follow him walking backstage. He talks to the big show during which time Big Show breaks a laptop because he's crying. He runs into Lana and uh, says, talks about how, you know, their their night together and what whatnot. Rusev shows up. Pretty funny. He talks all the way up to the gorilla position. He hits the ring. Um, this man has so much charisma. He said, he said, talks about the announcers. And he says, the other black dude that I don't know, referring to Byron Saxon, which is pretty funny. Then... <laughs> then the moment that only the rock could pull off. He sees the four guys dress cosplayed as classic wrestlers. Now these guys had been on the side of the ring that the hard camera sees. And the guy dressed up as Macho Man kept standing up twirling and everything and the crowd was was getting into it. The security moved them to the other side and and basically traded their seats with someone else. Still ringside seats, but they're now next to the hard camera, so the camera wouldn't you know see them all the time. And the Rock stands there. He looks at him. It's like this is the part where we go off script. And he goes out, talks to them. They introduce themselves. Uh, the guy who's dressed as Randy Savage does the worst Macho Man impression I've ever heard. Um, and uh, and then there's a guy dressed as a Rock, which. It just he, you couldn't tell it was the Rock, other than his T-shirt. Um, but yeah, that was pretty cool actually. And then the Rock gets back in the ring, continues cutting his promo. 
being just very rock like, and uh, he gets interrupted by the new day, and they get a nice big pop. And uh, the best part was, you know, Biggie always does his, uh, um, he says the name of the town, but this time he's like, oh, Rocky! And uh, it was just, came, the, the New Day came out. They not only were able to hang with The Rock, in some cases they even outshined him. This was a fantastic segment. Um, the Usos eventually come out and um, you know, beat down in The New Day. The Rock hits rock bottom on Big E. Hits a spine buster and a people's elbow on Xavier. Um, so the only thing I'm wondering is, are we going to get at WrestleMania, uh, The Rock and the Usos against The New Day? I'm not sure. Because he kept talking about WrestleMania and being there. I'm not sure what this does for any of this. But, um, yeah. Uh, but overall, great segment. The other big highlight of the show. Uh, we then had Brie Bella and Alicia Fox taking on Paige and Natalia. The thing I, I just thought watching this match is how sad it is to see this after that Becky Sasha match and the Becky Charlotte match the night before. Um, and Natalia's good; she can still go. Paige is good, but they uh, but they both been wrestling in this crappy diva style for so long that you watch them move in the ring and to be fair they are in there against Brie Bella and Alicia Fox but you watch them move in the ring and then you see you know Charlotte and Becky and Sasha who move like actual wrestlers it's just kind of sad um, uh, Paige and Natalie get the win that's that uh, the Miz has a match against Kalisto. Uh, the Miz gets in the ring. He starts cutting a promo. He's pissed about getting interrupted all the time. And as he's complaining about that, Kalisto's music hits. Um, I am pretty sure at some point during this match there was a This Is Awful chant. Um, Kalisto got the win after reversing a skull crushing finale into a Salida del Sol. It was what it was. Uh, apparently, Neville and, and Kalisto had a match on on SmackDown, which I haven't watched, but it was supposed to be really good. I'll have to I'll have to check that out. And then we had the main event, which was Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose versus the League of Assassin or League of Nations, sorry, uh, which was in this case Sheamus and Rusev with Alberto Del Rio and Wade Barrett in their corner. Um. Roman Reigns got mixed reactions. Go figure. Dean Ambrose was, was pretty darn over. Um, that having been said, I really think they were screwing with the audio during the match. Um, JBL was pretty nauseating during this match. His just toting of the company line. Uh, Reigns and Ambrose got the win. After the match, they hit a double power bomb on Rusev through the announce table. Um, from the top of so the, there was the French tables out there and the English table so they got on top of the French table power bombed Rusev through the American table uh, Stephanie McMahon comes out and says that the main event for Fastlane will be Roman Reigns versus Dean Ambrose versus Brock Lesnar and that's how they went off the air um, yeah it was <laughs> This was an episode of Raw that was really boring at parts, had some really good moments, had a couple of really good matches, one being just f outstanding, um, and, you know, had The Rock. But overall, I don't know how much that outweighs the parts that were meh. <laughs> you know, it was what it was. Uh, let's go into stuff that is just all awesome NXT. So NXT opened up with uh, Jason Jordan and Chad Gable in their new name, American Alpha, which I'm still not sure if I like, uh, versus Blake Murphy, Blake and Murphy with Alexa Bliss. Um, American Alpha get the win. Fun match. Lots of fun. Uh, we had Emma and Dana Brooke doing a backstage interview, and uh, that was good. Dana, 
I love Dana Brooke. I mean, she might not be the best wrestler in the ring, but her promos and her her um, interviews are fantastic. Uh, we had Oscar vignette, and then Nia Jax had a match against uh, Liv Morgan. Eva Marie was in Nia's corner. Uh, Nia gets the win. This was not good. It just it sucked. Uh, Carmella was doing a backstage promo with Colin Cassidy and Enzo Amore. They were all pissed. Uh, excuse me. Baron Corbin vignettes, followed by another one of those Vaudevillains angry vignettes. We then had Bull Dempsey, who I just love, uh, with his whole bull fit gimmick, and, uh, against the returning Alex Riley. Yes, Alex Riley is back. Uh, at one point during the match, he had a really nice spine buster. Uh, Riley got the win. Uh, yeah, it was it was just the return of Alex Riley. We then had Elias Sampson playing a guitar backstage. Uh, fucking, I don't know why. Uh, Alex Riley then did a backstage promo. Uh, he was pretty pissed that, you know, pretty much he's been forgotten. I will say that man has nice teeth. He really does. And he is cut. He is ripped. This poor guy is not very good in the ring. Um, we then had Elias Sampson against some dude named John Schuyler. And this is, you know, Full Sail University crowds are known for being this raucous crowd. And this crowd gave no shits about this match. Nothing, man. They did not care about Elias Sampson at all. They didn't care, and this match was boring as fuck. So, uh, yeah, Damian Sandow got the win with Shake, Rattle, and Roll. Can't believe they're get- he's using a freaking spinning neck breaker as his finish. Jesus Christ. Um, and yes, I did call him Damian Sandow because he looks like Damian Sandow. Without Damian's charisma or ability or anything. He's just a little bit more cut with a better, slightly better build. Um, yeah, and the guitar thing in the ring, stupid. Why Sampson sucks. Let's cut bait. We then had the hype bros doing a backstage promo uh, about the vaude villains angry vignettes. They don't get it. I don't either. Other than they're turning heel. We had a Samoa Joe vignette. Uh, then followed by a vignette of Finn Balor and Apollo Crews match from a few months ago and uh, announced that their rematch would be next week. It's, of course, not for the NXT title. Excuse me. Um, and then we had the main event, Baron Corbin versus Samoa Joe versus Sami Zayn. Uh, triple threat match for the number one contendership. I'll tell you what, this crowd seemed really tired. I know when they do their tapings, they tape about three to four episodes worth of stuff at once. So a lot of times, by that last taping, you can just tell the crowds are like, okay, I'm really tired. Um, but yeah, so one thing that I thought was was just weird during this match is, so it's a triple threat match, which means no disqualifications, no countouts. Joe had somebody on the outside of the ring. And he kept, like, getting in the ring, going under the rope, as if to break the count. It's like, dude, there's no count. But, anyway. So this match had kind of a clusterfuck of a finish. Uh, Sami Zayn put Corbin in a sharpshooter. He's While he's got him in the sharpshooter, uh, Joe jumps in the ring and puts a uh, crippler crossface on Baron Corbin. And when he does that, Corbin then taps out. The ref's like, dude, I don't know. They both had a hold in. I don't know. Samoa's like, he didn't tap out until I, you know, put him in the crossface, cracked back. William Regal comes out, talks to the ref, um, talks to Joe and and Sammy. Excuse me again. And basically says, look, I'm going to have to review the tape. And that's how the end of the episode Yeah, I don't even know what to think about that. We'll see what happens. Uh, There has been an announcement made for... Well, not really an announcement, but the card is coming together for uh, NXT TakeOver Dallas. 
in the most recent tapings. So uh, these are some spoilers, but it's going to be a f- freaking great card. Uh, Finn Balor will defend the NXT title against Samoa Joe. Um, Austin Aries will take on Baron Corbin. Um, my brain just stopped working. American Alpha will have a shot at the tag team titles against uh, Dash and Dawson. And Sami Zayn will take on Shinsuke Nakamura. Holy God, that's going to be great. So it's a hell of a card. It, I'm super excited. I'm very interested in seeing you know how they get there and the TV leading up to it and whatnot. But that sounds fucking great. All right, and finally for the week, Ring of Honor. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they do have a new little opening montage, which makes sense considering you know people have left and there have been changes and whatnot. Uh, they're in Charlotte, North Carolina. And the show opened up with the with a round one top prospect tournament match, um, Brian Fury against she uh, Shishim Ali. Uh, Fury apparently trained Sasha Banks and Donovan Dijak, and they actually mentioned Sasha Banks by name. Um, Fury got the win. The match started slow but picked up at the end. Uh, not bad. Fury's been around apparently for like eighteen years, uh, but so yeah, it's pretty good. Um, Cedric Alexander came out with Veda Scott. Um, Veda got on the mic, cut a promo, says that they want the biggest and best that Ring of Honor has to offer and send them on out, basically making an open challenge. And then comes Cheeseburger, who I love. Huge pop. Um, This was back and forth for a little bit. Cedric does get the win eventually. He attacks Cheeseburger after the match, which brings out Jonathan Gresham, uh, who beat Cedric Alexander a couple weeks back. Um, and this we then get Cedric's second match in a row. Um, so Jonathan Gresham against Cedric Alexander. Um, and Veda Scott causes a DQ when she slaps Gresham. After the match, Alexander attacks Gresham. Uh, it looks like this feud's going to continue. This is good stuff. They have good chemistry together, so uh, so that was pretty cool. And we next had a great in-ring promo segment, uh, one of the highlights of the show. <clears throat> Excuse me. Nigel McGinnis is in the ring. He's going to make an announcement for the main event of the 14th anniversary show from Las Vegas. Uh, Jay Lethal comes out with Truth Martini and Taylor Hendricks. Uh, Nigel says that um, Kyle O'Reilly is a viable contender, but that since Kyle lost his match to Jay Lethal and was then beaten by Adam Cole at Final Battle, Adam Cole is the new number one contender, which brings out Adam Cole. Uh, Adam gets on the mic and does story time with Adam Cole, baby. Nigel McGinnis then says, well, Adam, you didn't let me finish. You are the number one contender, but... Kyle O'Reilly is still a very viable opponent. So, the uh, main event for the 14th anniversary show will be Jay Lethal defending the Ring of Honor World Championship in a triple threat match against Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly. That sounds phenomenal to me. This brought out Kyle O'Reilly... Uh, who is, you know, spitting fire, and he says, look, I am i don't want to wait for for Las Vegas. I want to fight now. And he challenges uh, Cole and Lethal. So next week, um, so, well, yeah, Nigel makes a match for next week. It's going to be uh, Adam Cole and Jay Lethal against Red Dragon. That should be freaking awesome. Uh, we then get uh, the the main event, Michael Elgin versus Jay Briscoe with Mark Briscoe. Right before the match starts, uh, Moose comes out with Stokely Hathaway. Stokely announces that Moose has been added to the match. Um, this is a really good match. Jay wins with a backslide. Um, lots of fun. Afterwards, Elgin gets on the mic and says, 
okay, Jay, one-on-one matches, we're even. Uh, this match doesn't sit right with me. You know, you had your brother out here. Not that he did anything. Mark was on commentary, and he's so much fun on commentary. Um, but says, how about this? How about in Las Vegas, you and Mark go against me and Tanahashi in a tag team match. And they shake on it, and that's how it goes off the air. Uh, that's something else to look forward to. This 14th anniversary show is really stacking up to be a great pay-per-view, great start for the year. And that's it. Um, w- oh, one thing. Uh, head over to WrestlingExpress.net. There was a fan question was asked about uh, if you think Vince is basically jealous of Triple H or doesn't properly push NXT stars because he didn't make them. Uh, and Michael from Wrestling Express, who you know, has been on our show uh, many times and will be again, uh, probably close to WrestleMania, um, he asked me to write a response, so I did. And uh, you can find the link to that up on our Twitter page. Uh, but that, that's going to do it for this episode of Around the Ring. Appreciate everyone for tuning in. And uh, hope hope you all have a great week. And Oh, don't forget to uh, check out my other show that I'm on. I co-host a show called Nerdopolis uh, with Steve, who is a good friend of mine. We talk about all things nerdy, TV, movies, books, magazines, well, not magazines, comics, a bit about music, too. Um, follow that one on the Twitter, at NerdopolisOKC, and you can find links to episodes and whatnot there. It's good stuff. Uh, so until next time, as Jerry Springer always says, Take care of yourselves and each other. You've been listening to Around the Ring on the Spark Radio Network. All you have to do is change your point of view. And believe. Austin 316 says I just whipped your ass. Bam! Woo! That sucks more than anything that I've ever fucked before. What? It's for charity.